going to install a web server today. In 2008 server, so I'm going to go to server manager and I want to go to roles and I want to add a role, in this case a server role, if you here I'll select server roles. I want to select web server, internet information services. I need to add the dependencies, so I'm going to click on add required features. I'm going to click on next. Now I could just go with the defaults, but I want to add a few more things. So I'm going to go to role services under internet information services. And some of these will add in later, like FTP, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and add basic authentication, Windows authentication, digest authentication. Um, and I think the rest of those are, would, would suffice. So I'm going to click on Next. I'm going to click on Install. And the wizard will go through um, setting up the server and installing it. Okay, and installation succeeded. I'm going to click on Close. And Cool. We'll go ahead and configure a few things about our website. Um, when that's done, it'll add some you know, items into administrative tools. And in this case, um, the one I'm primarily interested in is Internet Information Services or IIS Manager. And I'm just going to um, make myself a shortcut here. Let me. Because we'll be frequenting that. Management console or tool. Go ahead and open it up and look at some of the configuration settings. All right, and you can have multiple sites, multiple virtual hosts, and directories, um, you know, dozens um, or even hundreds if your server can handle the the throughput. But um, in this case, I'm just going to go with the default website, all right, so just a single website, which will be by default over port 80. And let's just look at some of the settings here. And notice here's my server name. I'll try to expand this all the way. So here's my server name. And in this case, I'm just a member server. I'm not a, um, you know, actually a standalone. I haven't done DC promo. I'm not Active Directory. I have another example where it's Active Directory, but here we'll just do a standalone web server. And the first thing I want to set up or look at is authentication. Notice anonymous authentication is enabled. So we'll leave this enabled for now. Later, we're going to go and enable basic authentication on a, a virtual directory, password protected directory. So we'll do that. But for now, we'll just leave that as it is. Um, I do want to edit the default document. And um, right now, the one that's in there, when you right after you install it, is IIS start. So let's take a look at that. We'll park that right there and if I open up my computer and let me go here and let me go notice this folder inet pub was added once that folder inet pub is added this is where www root that's where you'll have your you know, sort of your um, for the at least the default website that's the home folder or the root folder okay and I want to do a few things here I, I like to do when I modify permissions and config files um, I want to check this option, show hidden files and folders, and I want to uncheck or untick, hide extensions for known file types, hide protected operating system files, and also want to go down here and I want to untick, use the sharing wizard. And I just, you know, I like to do that to make things more easily configurable. Okay, so this is I, I, uh, IISS start.htm, and what I'm going to do first is rename it to something a little bit more standardized. So index.html. Now if I do that, this is the default web page that would load by default right here. So I want to just move this up. And so I'm back in Internet Information Services, I'm going to move it up and all the way to the top there as my default document. Okay. And again, I'm just going to park that. I'll minimize it and leave that there. So this is my default web page here. And now I want to test it and see if my web server is actually functioning the way that it should. Um, the only other thing is, um, you know, by default, when you install 2008 server, you have the enhanced uh, Internet Explorer security configuration. And I mean, I guess that's good. It's, it's protective and all. But I want to disable that or shut that down for now um, just to make it easy. You know, I don't have to go through multiple clicks every time I open the uh, web browser. Just kind of gets annoying, but maybe we'll turn it back on later. So I'm just going to go to Programs and Features, and turn Windows Features on or off. 
I'm just going to go to configure uh, Internet Explorer and hit security configuration and I'm going to shut it off or turn it off right here okay and then when I do that it'll at least it'll quit nagging me um, and I'm just going to open up my uh, web browser and I'm going to basically load HTTP colon forward slash forward slash localhost Now, let me turn that off and nag, 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 nag. So, this is the default web page, so to speak. Okay, and I'm just going to do, we're going to do our own web page real quick so we can play around with some other things like directory browsing. Um, Everything works there. Um, the next thing I want to do is create a directory. I'm just going to make a directory here and I'm going to call it data. Okay. So this directory is called data. And here I'm going to add some files. Um, Alright, so I just made some data in that directory. I'm going to turn this into a virtual directory now. So um, what I need to do is set up permissions on it. I just need to make sure that you know I have the appropriate permissions. And if you'll notice, if you check the DACL, the access control entries in the ACL for that folder, in this case, notice which account you know via inheritance has read access. In this case, the group IAS I users for my server. So, um, that's what Internet Information Services uses. It's a service account it creates to access different things. So what I want to do is I want to go here and I'm going to right click and on this case on the default website and I want to add a virtual directory and I'm just going to call this booty and I'll specify the physical path okay and on this virtual directory um, I'm going to I want to set up a directory browsing and I'm going to do that right here. Okay. And with directory browsing, notice what happens. If um if I go to booty, there's no index file there, but I have all of these files here. I'm able to list all of these files. And they're just empty text files, but 
So if, if you turn your browser on, it'll give you a list of the folder contents on your website. And that can be okay on a subject. You know, I would never want to do that on, you know, on the root website. Because there may be certain files and things that I just don't want people to necessarily be able to, you know, to access or to see. So in this case, I'm, I'm leaving it disabled on the default website. And what would happen there is, notice I'm going to localhost. Well, if I, if I leave it disabled, and I were to rename this, um, let's put an exclamation point, we'll call it not index HTML. If I were to do that and refresh, notice I'm forbidden access, it's verboten. And the reason being, directory access is not enabled on the root folder. However, let me change that back now. However, in data, there's no HTML files at all, or active server pages or anything, and yet it doesn't tell me it's forbidden. It'll actually let me go there. The reason is, is because I just turned on directory browsing. Let me go. Let me go here to Booty, right, and that has directory browsing. So let's add a link real quick. Um, I go here and here I'm just going to add a link um, all right so now when I click on that link it takes me to the directory and you know what would I use this for well maybe I have a bunch of files I want people to be able to download or something like that and that's fine for anonymous access where I just let everybody in there to download. Now let's say I want a password protected directory for one particular reason or another. I would leave, uh, you know, in this case directory browsing enabled, but I need to change my authentication from anonymous to basic. So I'm going to do that real quick. Let me go here and here. And then I'm going to double click on authentication and I'm going to disable the anonymous authentication and I'm going to enable basic authentication. Okay, so it's enabled. And you can specify a default domain or realm, but again, this is a you know, it's a standard standalone uh, server in this case. It's not, you know, haven't run DC Promo or done it to a uh, domain, so it's not even a member server. So for basic authentication now, um, I need to create a user account. Now normally if this were Active Directory, I would do this in Active Directory users and computers. Um, but since this is a standalone server, um, in this case, I'm going to do local users and groups. And I just want to create like a service account. You know, in this case, I, um, I'm just going to call this person web user. I'm going to give him a password. Um, and user doesn't change the password, cannot be changed, and doesn't expire. I'm going to set those options there. All right, so I have this account now, web user. So remember, if you've done DC Promo and you're Active Directory and that's part of a domain or a domain controller, you would not use what I did. You would use Active Directory users and computers, but the idea is the same. And so what I want to do is I want to remove inheritance on this folder. Because remember, by default, anybody gets anonymous access to it from here. So I want to have to kind of break inheritance. So to do that, I have to click on Advanced edit and then where I need to break it or what I need to break it on is this account here so I'm going to untick this or uncheck include inheritable permissions from the object's parent and I'm just going to say copy because so I want to leave all the other accounts but I just want to re remove this particular one all right, so I remove that group there and now I'm going to add web user and let's say I want to give web user full control and maybe it's some password protected directory and I let them upload and download things or I could just make it read only, but either way, I'm going to set it up so that only that account, once they authenticate with the account ID, 
and the password can get into that directory. And I'm going to tick this option, replace all existing inheritable permissions and all descendants with inheritable permissions from this object. I'm going to click on OK. And OK. And notice that access control entries on my discretionary access control list now, if I you know go through it, I just have in this case the web user. And that's it. I don't have that other group. Okay. So where I should try to go into that folder, let me refresh this page. And actually let me add a link to. Could just type it in here. I'll show you. I'll type it in the first time, but we're just going to add a link. Okay, now in this case it's going to query me or ask me for a password. And if I don't give it if I give it the wrong password, unauthorized, I can't get in. case I can't authenticate unless I use the account web user and the password and then I can go to this folder <laughs> 